You tell me where a lovely maiden dwelleth named Yum Yum. The ward of Ko Ko. In pity, speak, oh speak, I pray you. Why, who are you? Who ask this question. Come gather round me, and I'll. Oh. 
wandering minstrel, I a thing of shreds and tattoos, of ballad songs and snatches, and dreamy lullaby. My catalogue is long through every passion ranging, and full your humors changing. I tune my supple song, I tune my song. The patriotic sentiment is wanted. I patriotic ballads cut and dried. For wherever country's banner may be planted, all other local banners are defied. Our war rehearsed in savage ranks assembled. Never quail, for they conceal it if they do. And I shouldn't be surprised if nations tremble before the mighty troop, the troops of pity crew. And if you call for a song of the sea, we'll heave the capstan around. With a yell, he fell for the wind, he string, our anchors a trip, and the hands are lee. Hurrah for the heavenward bound. Tickle a landsman's taste, but the happiest star a sailor sees is when he's down at an inland town, this Nancy on his knees, yeah, oh, and he's all around her waist. And then the cats that don't be gone, and the fiddlers in the town, with a young king, oh, and 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 a young king, oh, Shreds and tattoos of ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby and dreamy lullaby. your business with uh, Yum Yum? I'll tell you. A year ago, I was a member of the Titipoo Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. Whilst discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. We loved each other at once, but she was betrayed to her guardian, Coco, a cheap tailor, and I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight when I heard a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner. 
under the following remarkable circumstances, which I am at liberty to divulge to you in the form of a song. <laughs> A great Mikado, virtuous man, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might best be steadied. So he decreed in words succinct that all who flirted, leered, or winked, unless con you be early licked, should forthwith be beheaded, 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 should forthwith be beheaded. And I expect that you'll agree that he was right to so decree. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right as right can be. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right as right as right can be. And all is right as right can be. You'll understand caused great dismay throughout the land For young and old and shy and bold were equally affected The youth who winked a roving eye For breathed the non-connubial sigh Was thereupon condemned to die He usually objected, objected, objected He usually objected <laughs> You'll allow as I expect that he was right to so object And I am right and you are right and everything is quite correct and you are right and we are right and everything is right is quite correct And everything is quite correct All is quite correct So we straight let out on bail a convict from the county jail who said was next on some pretext condemned it to be mown off and made him headsman for we said who's next to be decapitated cannot cut off another said until he's cut his own off his own off his own off until he's cut his own off <laughs> And we are right, I think you say, to argue in this kind of way. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to lure and lay. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right to lure and lure and lay. And I am right, and you are right, and all is The Chief Tailor, Lord High Executioner of Titty Poo. Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. A logical Mikado, seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence, has rolled the two officers into one. And every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you're a nobleman of the highest rank, to condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You will understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal primordial atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering, but I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them, you did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this up start as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buck Hounds, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Titipu and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one, and at a salary. 
A poobah paid for his services. I, a salaried minion, but I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. And it does you credit. But I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I accept refreshment at any hands, however lowly. I also retail state secrets at a very low figure. <laughs> for instance, any further information concerning Yam Yam would come under the head of a state secret. Another insult. And I think a light one. <laughs> Young man, this fair likewise go to. Yum, yum, the fair you must not do. It will not do. I'm sorry for you, you very imperfect ablutioner. This very day from school, yum, yum. We'll wend her way and home and come. With a beat of drum and a rum tum tum to win the Lord her executioner. And the brass will crash and the trumpets bray and they've cut to death on their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all ever with the Lord her executioner. And the brass will crash and the trumpets bray and they've cut to death on their wedding day. It's a hopeless case, as you may see, and in your place away I flee. But don't blame me, I'm sorry to be of your pleasure a diminutioner. They'll file their pact extremely soon. In point of fact, this afternoon, her honeymoon with that buffoon at seven commences, so you shut her. And the brass will crash, and the trumpets spray, and they'll cut to death in the wedding day. She'll toddle away as all ever with the Lord her executioner. And the brass will crash, and the clock is play, and the cut and dice on their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all ever with the Lord her executioner. And have I journeyed for a month or nearly to learn that yum yum, whom I love so dearly? This day to Kelke is to be united. The fact appears to be as you've recited. <laughs> But he comes equipped as suits his station. He'll give you any further information. <laughs>
taken from the county jail by a set of curious chances, liberated then on bail on mere recognizances, wafted by a favoring gale, as one sometimes is in trances to a height that few can scale. Saved by long and weary dances, surely never had a male under such like circumstances. So adventurous a tale, which may rank with most romances. Taken from the county jail, from the county jail. by a set of curious chances, surely never had a male. So adventurous a tale. Pudlians. <laughs> I am much touched by this generous reception. I can only trust that by sincere attention to duty, I shall ensure a continuance of those favours which it will be ever my study to deserve. <laughs> if I am ever called upon to act professionally, I am happy to think that there will be no shortage of people whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. Yeah. <laughs> As someday it may happen that a victim must be found, I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed. They never would be missed. There's weightlifters and bodybuilders, people of that sort. Bank robbers who retire to Spain the minute they get caught. Bishops who don't believe in God, chief constables who do. Or people who host chat shows and the guess what's on them too. And customs men who fumbling through your underwear insist. I don't think they'd be missed. I'm sure they'd not be missed. He's not them on the list. He's not them on the list. And then none of them be missed. They're not of them. There's the people with pretentious names like Justin Trish and Rolf and the gynecologist. I've got him on the list. All muggers, joggers, buggers, floggers, people who play golf. They never would be missed. They never would be missed. All waitresses who make you wait, accountants of all kinds. And actresses who kiss and tell and wiggle their behinds. And poncy little singers who to entertain us try by dressing up like women and by singing far too high. <laughs> and who on close observance must be either stoned or pissed. I don't think they'd be missed. I'm sure they'd not be missed. He's got them on the list. He's got them on the list. And then none of them be missed. Then none of them be missed. There's the beggars who write letters from the Inland Revenue and the gossip columnist. I've got him on the list. All critics and comedians and opera singers too. They none of them be missed. They none of them be missed. All traffic wardens, bankers, men who sell Venetian blinds. All advertising chappies and Australians of all kinds. <laughs> and nasty little editors whose papers are the pits. Who fill their rags with gossip and with huge and floppy grits. <laughs> And girls who sell the stories of the Tories they have kissed. But you must have got the gist. There's none of them be missed. You may put them on the list. You may put them on the list. And then none of them be missed. Then none of them be missed. Bar, 
It seems that the festivities in connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. I should like to do it handsomely, and I want to consult you as to the um, amount I should spend on them. Uh, certainly. In which of my capacities? With First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse or Private Secretary? Oh. Well, suppose we say as uh, private secretary. Speaking as your private secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself, do it well. Exactly, as the city will have to pay for it. That is your advice. As the private secretary. Of course, you'll understand that as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I'm bound to see that due economy is observed. Oh, but you said just now, don't stint yourself, do it well. As private secretary. And now you say due economy must be observed. As chancellor of the exchequer. Oh, I see. Come over here where the chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> now, as my solicitor, how would you advise me to deal with this little difficulty? Oh, as your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying chance it. Thank you, I will. If it were not that as Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. Come round here where the Lord Chief Justice can't hear us. Now then, as First Lord of the Treasury. Of course, as First Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. If it were not that as Leader of the Opposition, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. Or, oh, as Paymaster General, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. <laughs> but then, as Archbishop of Titipu, and Chief Rabbi, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as First Commissioner of Police. That's extremely awkward. I don't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be square, but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless they are insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter shall have my careful consideration. <laughs> but my bride and her sisters are approaching, and any little compliment on your part, such as, say, uh, an abject grovel in a typical um, Nipponese attitude, would be esteemed a favor. No money, no grovel. Three little maids from school. Three little maids who all unwary come from a lady's very, very 
to be. You're not going to kiss me before all these people. Well, that was the general idea, yes. Well, it, it seems a bit odd, doesn't it? It's rather peculiar. Oh, I expect it's all right. Must have a beginning, you know. <laughs> well, of course, I know nothing about these things, but I have no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual, eh, Lord Chamberlain? I have no need done. <laughs> Your pardon. Will you kindly present me? Yes, 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 yes. One at a time, if you please. No, shush, shush. This is the gentleman who used to play so beautifully on the Marine Parade. Mm. Sir, I have the misfortune to love your ward, yum yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. Anger? <laughs> Not a bit, my boy. <laughs> Why, I love her myself. Charming little girl, isn't she? Pretty eyes, nice hair. Taking little thing altogether. Very glad to have my opinion backed up by a competent authority. Thank you very much indeed. <whistles> Take him away. I beg your pardon, but what is this? That is a tremendous swell. Uh, go away, little girls. Can't talk to little girls like you. Go away, there's dust. A Cuba, allow me to present my three wards. This is my bride elect. What do you want me to do to them? Mind, I'll not kiss them even for cash. Oh, no, no, you needn't kiss them. Just a, a teeny grovelette. It goes against the grain. Uh, how do you do, little girls? How do you do? That was very good indeed. I'm not in the habit of saying how do you do, little girls, how do you do to anyone under the rank of a stockbroker. <laughs> Regret if we have failed in etiquette towards the rank so high, we shall know better by and by. But you, of course, must have it spring so hard and us so hard and us. And don't in birdhood's happy spring be hard and us, be hard and us if we're inclined to dance and sing la 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 la. But you, of course, must have it spring so hard and us. And don't in You cannot show too much respect to what you had a date of you, but nobody does so right on you. That you that us should have its cling is hard on us, is hard on us to operate, but if we cling, so hard on us, so hard on us, if we be can to dance and sing. But you're the cause, must have its cling so hard on us, and don't it go. At last we're alone. 
I sought you night and day for three weeks in the belief that your guardian was beheaded, and I find you're about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you don't love him. Alas, no. Modified rapture. But why don't you refuse him? Oh, what good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls don't arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. True. <laughs> From 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. <laughs> Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of a Lord High Executioner. But shall I tell her? Yes, she won't betray me. <laughs> <laughs> what if it should prove that after all I am no musician? There, I was certain of it directly I heard you play. <laughs> What if it should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? Oh. But why is Your Highness disguised? And what has Your Highness done? And will Your Highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court and, assuming the disguise of a second trombone, <laughs> I joined the band in which you found me when I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe but we're quite alone, and nobody can see us. Still, that doesn't make it right. Uh, to flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, deuce take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. If it were not for that, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side, oh. like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes, like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love. Like that. With our arms round each other's waists, oh, like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. As it is, of course, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco, you know. <laughs> Being engaged to Coco. <gasps> <laughs> Not to Coco plighted, I would say in tender tone, loved one, let us be united, let us be each other's own. I would merge all rank and station, worldly sneers on what to us and to mock my admiration. There she 
it goes. <laughs> to think how entirely my future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. <laughs> really, it hardly seems worthwhile. Oh, matrimony, thou ship of fool. Now then, what is it? Can't you see I'm so liloquizing? You've interrupted my interior monologue, sir. I am the bearer of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. A letter? From the Mikado? What on earth could he want with me? It's in Japanese. <laughs> uh, the Mikado is struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Titipu for a year and decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within one month, the post of Lord I Executioner shall be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. But that would involve us all in uh, irretrievable ruin. Yes, there's no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, uh, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. To me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Maybe because in the first place, self-decapitation is an extremely difficult, not to say dangerous, thing to attempt. <laughs> and in the second, it's suicide. And suicide is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. Well, we might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence before a full court. Besides, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try. Even if you only succeeded in cutting it half off, that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the Imperial will. No. Pardon me, but there I am adamant. As official headsman, my reputation is at stake. I can't consent to embark upon an operation unless I see my way clear to a satisfactory result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. My good sir, awkwardness of your position is grace itself compared with that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. I'm afraid that unless you can obtain a substitute... A substitute? Huh. Nothing simpler. Pouvoir, I appoint you... Lord, I substitute. I should be delighted. Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. I am so proud if I allowed my family pride to be my guide. I volunteer to quit this sphere instead of you in a minute or two. But family pride must be denied and set aside and fortified and fortified. My brain it teems with endless schemes, both good and new, for titty poo, for titty poo. But if I flit, the benefit that I diffuse, the town would lose. Now every man to aid his clan should plot and plan as best he can. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are cut in two can hardly feel the fatal steel, and so are slain, are slain without much pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your courage grew to bid us adieu. I am so proud. I reign in tea. I am so proud. 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 And so, although I wish to go and greatly pine to brightly shine and take the line of a hero kind with three or nine, I must decline and go and show both friend and foe how much you dare. I'm quite aware it's your affair, yet I declare I'd take your share, but I don't much care. I must, I take your share, but I don't much care. I object, I take your share, but I don't I object, I take your share, but I don't care. I object, I object. 
the city's all empty, the dog, dog, dog. In a presidential prison with a lifelong lock. Awaiting the sensation of a short, short, shock. From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. To the city's all silence in a dog, dog, dog. In a presidential prison with a lifelong lock. Awaiting the sensation of a short, short, shock. From a cheap and chippy chopper on a big black block. A dog, dog, dog. A lifelong lock. A short, short, shock. A big black block. To the city's all silence in a presidential prison. And awaiting the sensation from a cheap and chippy chopper on a big This is simply appalling. I who allowed myself to be reprieved at the last moment, <laughs> simply in order to benefit my native town, I'm now required to die within one month. <laughs> and that's by a man whom I have loaded dead with honors. Is this public gratitude? Is this the... <laughs> Go away, sir, how dare you? Am I never to be permitted to soliloquize? Oh, go on, don't mind me. What are you, what are you doing with... <laughs> what are you doing with them pills? I'm about to terminate an unendurable existence. Terminate your existence? Oh, nonsense, sir. Whatever for? Because you're going to marry the girl I adore. Nonsense, sir. I won't permit it. I'm a humane man. If you attempt anything of the kind, I shall order your instant arrest. Come, sir. Desist at once, or I summon my guard. That's absurd. If you attempt to raise an alarm, I instantly perform the happy dispatch with this pistol. No, no. This is horrible. Well, you cold-blooded scoundrel. Are you aware that in taking your own life, you're committing a crime, which is... Oh. Substitute. What's the matter? Um, is it absolutely certain that you are resolved to die? Absolutely. Will nothing whatever shake your resolution? Nothing. Threats, entreaties, prayers, all useless? All. My mind is made up. Well, then, if you really mean what you say, and if nothing whatever will shake your determination, and if you are absolutely resolved to die, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely at the hands of the public executioner. But I don't see how that will benefit me. You don't? No. Oh. Um, well, uh, observe, you'll have a month to live. And you'll live like a fighting cock at my expense. When the day comes, there'll be a grand public ceremonial. You'll be the central figure. No one will attempt to deprive you of that position. <laughs> there'll be a procession. There'll be bands, a dead march, bells tolling, all the girls in tears, yum yum distracted. <laughs> then when it's all, um, uh, over, <laughs> General rejoicing and a display of fireworks in the evening. You won't be there to see them, of course, but they'll be there just the same. Do you think Yum Yum would really be distracted at my death? Oh, bless you, I'm convinced of it. She's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. I'd be sorry to cause her pain. Perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and travel in Europe for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. Oh, I, I don't think you could forget um, Yum Yum so easily. And after all, what is more miserable than a love-blighted life? True. <clears throat> life without Yum Yum. Why, it seems absurd. And yet a good many people in the world have to endure it. Poor sod, yes. <laughs> You're quite right not to be of their number. I won't be of their number. Noble fellow. I tell you how we'll manage it. Let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month, you may be head man. No, no, I draw the line at yum yum. Very good. If you can draw the line, so can I. Stop, wait. I mean, be, be, be reasonable. I mean, how can I consent to your marrying yum yum if, if, if I'm going to marry her myself? My good fellow, she'll be a widow in a month and you can marry her then. Oh, yes, I, I, I quite see that. But, but dear me, my position during the next month will be most unpleasant. Not half so unpleasant as mine at the end of it. Very well, then. I agree. After all, it's only postponing my wedding for a month. But, um, look here. 
You won't attempt to prejudice her against me, will you? You see, she's been educated to be my wife. She's been taught to regard me as a wise and good man. Don't worry, she'll never learn the truth from me. Congratulate me, gentlemen, I found a volunteer. The Japanese Tis Nanki Poo. Hey, Nanki Poo. I think he'll do. Yes, yes, he'll do. He yields his life if I'll yum yum surrender. Now I adore that girl with passion tender and could not yield her with a ready will or her a lot. If I did not adore myself with passion tender still, with passion tender still. Take her, she's yours. <laughs> Has passed away. The the oh, the night may come too soon. There's yet a month of afternoon.
faithless one, this insight you shall rule. In vain for mercy, on your knees you'll see you. I'll tear the mask from your disguising. Now comes the blow. Prepare yourself for new surprising. I'll foil my foe. No minstrel he, despite bravado. I know he is the son of you. With this tornado, he is the only son. 